Good morning. In this video, we will take a look at two different timers in DaVinci Resolve. One of them is the time code that Resolve has built in, and the second one we will create ourselves. Last week, when I was editing a video of me driving on a truck, I wanted to include a WAP timer. But I'm new to Resolve, I don't know how to do this. So I opened YouTube, looked at a bunch of tutorials, and all of them suggested the use of the time code. You see, the time code will actually show you the time passed after the text clip is added, but this time is formatted as hours, minutes, seconds, and then the number of frames. I don't need that number of frames and all of you who are looking for WAP timers you don't need the number of frames as well all we need is the number of milliseconds right okay let's hop in to resolve as you can see this is my timeline that i used to edit the clips last week and it's 24 frames per second this will be important later when we are creating the WAP timer First, I'll show you how to use the time code that was suggested by the video tutorials on YouTube. And after that, we'll start creating our own WAP timer. Go to the edit screen of DaVinci Resolve and open the FX library. Then go to titles and select the text post clip. Drag it somewhere on your time timeline and extend it so you can, oops, sorry, extend it so you can see more of it here. We're only seeing the text title. First, I'll close the FX library so I have more space. And while this clip is selected, I'll open the inspector. Here, you have the style text input. If you right click on it, there is a context menu where you can select some predefined texts. One of them is the time code. Let's select this one. And now you can see that you have timer from the start to the end of this clip that will show you this one is hours past minutes seconds and the last one is frames you can see if i start from the first frame and i move one frame at a time the last number is increasing by one up until 23 but after that we hop into the first second and again we're at the zeroth frame now let's go back to the inspector and remove the time code by right clicking and selecting remove time code. The cool thing about the text post element and a thing that I didn't know actually is that you can write any code here and you can do this in the expression. If you right click and select the last thing from the context menu which is expression you have a new text input here just below the style text. Here, you have some useful variables predefined by Resolve. One of them is the time variable. Let me just write time here. And now we have the number of frames. This is the total number of frames since the start of the clip. It will be increasing with each frame that we move forward. And this total number of frames will help us calculate the seconds, milliseconds, minutes, and everything that we need for our WAP timer. The one important thing here is my time frame is 24 frames per second. If yours is different, you need to substitute something in the calculation. Whoa, 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 stop. The next part here was really unclear. And I prepared a keynote presentation, which I know that it sounds bad, but hopefully the keynote presentation will help me show you visually the calculations that we'll be using on later. Let's start by something really simple. For example, one minute has 60 seconds and each of those seconds are actually 24 frames or 1000 milliseconds. And one frame is 124th of a second, which is around 41.6 milliseconds. One thing that DaVinci Resolve provides us is the total number of frames. And the total number of frames here, the start is zero. Then after the first second has passed, we have 24 frames. And when the third second is starting, we have 
48 frames, the next frame will be the 49th frame, and the last frame of the third second will be the 71st frame. Those will be the values of the time variable that we have. By having the time variable, we can determine what our timer should show and our what timer should show 2 seconds and 41 milliseconds for the 49th frame. Let's move on. Here we have a simple table that we'll use for reference later on. Some important things for that table is that 1 minute is actually 1040 140 frames and <clears throat> again one frame is 41.6 milliseconds. If our watt timer is showing 1 minute 30 seconds and 460 milliseconds, let's calculate at which frame this should happen. So to calculate it we can just have 1 minute which is 1440 frames, then to that number add the number of seconds multiplied by 40 by 24 sorry which will be 312 and then those milliseconds are actually 10 frames if we combine all of those frames we can see that the value of time at 1 minute 30 seconds and 416 milliseconds should be 1762 frames okay that's the easy part let's try the other way around we'll need to calculate the watt timer here to do this we'll need two matrix that i'll show you first i'll show you all the calculations and after that i'll explain them to calculate the minutes we'll have to divide the total number of frames by 1440 frames which is 24 by 60 and we get a minute and something. To remove that something, we'll use a function that is mat4. You have that function provided by DaVinci Resolve, which is actually a Python function, but that's not important right now. The idea of mat4 is that it will take only the whole part of a number. In our case, it will take only the number one, and we will be able to print one minute. After that, we need to calculate the seconds. The seconds are easy and we'll be using another math trick. The first part of calculating the seconds is dividing the total number of frames by 24. This will give us the total number of seconds. In our case, there are 73 point something. But we need a number between 0 and 59. To do this, we'll divide this number with the percent sign by 60. This division will give us only the remainder. For example, if we have 14 and we divide it with the percent sign by 5, we'll get 4 because we can fit 5 twice in 14 and everything that is remaining is our answer here. And we'll get 13 point something. Again, we'll use mat4 and get only 13 seconds. For the milliseconds, when we know this division by the percent sign, we can divide the total number of frames by 24 and we will get the frames that passed since the start of the last second. In our case this is 10 and then multiply that number 10 by our approximation for how many milliseconds does it take for a single frame to pass. So 10 by 41.6 is 416 milliseconds. Awesome! Now we have the three numbers here. We have the three numbers that we need for our watt timer, but how will we be able to show them? Okay, we know that we would like to have two digits for the minutes, two digits for the seconds, and then three digits for the milliseconds. I won't get into a lot of details, but we'll use string format, which is again a function that is provided by Resolve, again a Python function. And the first argument here is a pattern that will be filling with placeholders. The placeholder for the minutes is this percent zero to D, then we have the same placeholder for the seconds and we have percent zero three D for the milliseconds because we would like three digits here. The second, third and fourth argument of the function call will be our minutes, seconds and milliseconds. Okay, we're back into resolve. The first thing that I'll do is actually show you that seconds calculation here. And 
here, you saw that we have the time, which is the total number of frames. If we divide that by 24, which is our number of frames per second in this timeline, we will get some really strange number. Again, we'll use mat 4 here. And we'll end up with the number 13, which would be the 13 seconds. Let me see. And now we're at the 68 seconds and we'll use the percent sign to divide this by 60 so we can get a number between 0 and 59. This input here is pretty small and it's not really made to write bigger expressions. So I'll copy what we have. I will open my text editor of choice and I'll continue with writing, writing the whole expression. First, we have this, which is our second. Now, I, I would like to, uh, to calculate and write the expression for our minutes, which will be time divided by 24 frames, multiplied by 60 for each second, and I know that I'll get a number that is point something again, so I'll use math for once more. In our case, I'm not concerned with runs that are longer than an hour, but if you are, you need to divide here with the percent sign. And for the milliseconds, let's write it again. Uh, we have the total number of frames. We need to get only the frames since the last second has started and then multiply them by our approximation for how many milliseconds it takes for a single frame and all of this can be a number that is not whole so let's take only the whole part of it now this is the three expressions that we need, the minutes, the second, and the milliseconds. Let's format them with string format. If you remember our format from the presentation, if you don't, just follow along. We need percent zero to D. The second one here is percent zero to D again for the seconds. And then we need to add the milliseconds, which is, which will be actually three digits. So, percent zero 3D. And now let's use our expressions. This one for the minutes. Then we'll add the one for the seconds. And the last, the last one for the milliseconds. Okay, uh, by using my text editor, I can actually uh, check the parentheses and I'll show you what will happen if you missed some of those. I'm copying the whole string here and adding it here as a, an expression. Wow, <laughs> this worked the first time. And if I... For example, miss. let's remove the last parentheses here. You just get a black screen. And if you get that black screen, it's fine. It's normal. Just check your parentheses, check your expression. It's probably something really minor that you need to address. Don't worry about it. You can, again, copy it, take a look at it in a bigger input. This small input has given me problems a couple of times, so it's useful to edit the expression somewhere else and just copy and paste it here. And that's it. Now we have a timer and as I said, this timer is pretty accurate. Although it's using an approximation based on the number of frames, those times were pretty close to the actual times from the official web timer on the track. It was actually pretty hard to create this tutorial, not because creating the timer is hard, but for me, that's the first tutorial that I'm creating. If you enjoyed it and it was useful for you, 
show your support in the comments and send me those track videos that you create with the WAP timer. Bye guys!